Mama Cat. George? Hello, my sniffers. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Cody, my African Grey, and we want to welcome you to Storytime Sunday. I have some very interesting news for you guys. And for you, Cody, today's Storytime Sunday is going to be about Cody. I think this is Cody's first Storytime Sunday. In fact, every time I have Cody join me for a Storytime Sunday, I think the story has been about my previous African Grey, George. Now, Cody really hasn't done anything significant in the small amount of time that I've had him in terms of a major dramatic story. However, he's done a lot of cute things and since you guys have been with me from the beginning of his rescue, I thought that it might be a fun idea to just give you a Cody update and go through what it's been like so far living with Cody and the things that he said, because you know, African greys tend to talk and how I felt when I first heard him talking and what his personality has been like and who he loves in the family most. Cody, you are just speechless, aren't you? You are not expecting this to be about you. I think he's happy about it though. For those of you new to my channel, let me explain. Cody is a rescue. I consider a rescue to be a bird that is in need of a home suddenly because even if he's not tortured or abused, a lot of the times these birds are locked in their cages for a very long time and I consider that to be a rescue because here we are giving Cody a new life. But one day, when I first heard about Cody and I was on my way to go pick him up, I made a video about it and sent it out to the YouTube world and you guys have been following it since. If you haven't been, you can go to the playlist on my channel called The Cody Files and watch the progress that I had with Cody the day that I got him and me bringing him home and surprising the family with the new bird and then finally deciding that we are going to keep Cody. Now that you're caught up, let me tell you what it's been like with Cody. The first thing I remember about Cody was what you guys have seen. He was kind of aggressive and a little bit on edge the first day. I coaxed him with some treats and some quality time. At first I thought he's really into men because when George arrived, he was so nice to George and interested in George and I come downstairs, you guys can see that in the video, and George is petting him. So I'm like, I don't really think there's going to be so much hope for me and this bird being best buddies, but I'm gonna try, because you know how I feel about African greys. I think the second day that I had Cody, I wanted to get him out of the cage, and he was in that territorial mode where he didn't really feel like coming out when he was in the cage. So I did what I did in the video, my parrot's first day home, and I literally took a blanket and got him out because I knew that once he was out, everything would be different from there. And it was. To my surprise, Cody ended up on my shoulder that moment. And of course, I'm kind of like, oh, okay, that's where you want to be. Um, last time we had an encounter, you bit me. But all right, let's go downstairs. I've seen you be nice to George. I've seen you let somebody pet you. So let's go downstairs and hang out. And he was pretty happy the entire day. Well, the next day, I got him out and he came out easily from the cage after that whole blanket scenario, which really wasn't that bad at all. We were having breakfast and he was on the stand and he said, love you. And I was like, oh my God, you love me? I'm so excited. Now, of course, I knew he was probably saying that, maybe not knowing what he's saying, of course, probably not directed towards me, He's probably saying it because the family that he lived with before had a kid and they were probably saying that to their kid. Either way, it doesn't matter. I melted. 
and Aww. Cody came over and I let him sit and have breakfast with me, but he's not really into the table food, surprisingly enough. He's pretty into his pellets and things like that. If you'll remember, my African Grey that died, George, was the love of my life. And I really wanted to bond with this African Grey. I really wanted Cody to love me. And when I say wanted, I think what I really mean is needed. I think I needed his love. I really thought at this point that he was just going to be a guy's bird. But I really wanted to try. Well, that day, we spent a lot of time together. And I sat him on me when I watched movies and I decided that he was going to sleep in my bedroom, which he had already been doing. I was in my bed and I thought, let me try to just put him next to me. What was weird was on that third day, I was giving Cody kisses and he was kissing me back and he was going <coughs> like obnoxiously, like kissing me, like as if he hadn't seen me in so long. It was the weirdest thing. Now I will tell you guys that I did see Cody three years prior and I'm not saying Cody remembered me, but I am insinuating something else. And if you stay tuned next week, I'm going to tell you the secret story of Cody. And this is a story for only believers. This is not a story for non-believers. So do not tune in next week unless you are ready to listen to something really amazing that I've been hesitating to tell you guys. But I think in honor of the date of next week, I am going to tell you the secret story of Cody. Yeah, I waited till the middle of the video to sneak that in to see who's paying attention. But I think you guys will be really excited and I think this will be the most mind-blowing story that I have ever, ever told you. So make sure you tune in next week to hear the secret story of Cody. But until then, let's get back to Cody's behavior with me. Cody had been kissing me like crazy, like really obsessively, like somebody who hadn't seen me in a while and really wanted to just like show me how much they loved me. And of course, I love this. I'm like, can I have a kiss? A kiss. And he's like, and he also would go like this. You're so cute. And I was like, wow, that's so weird. Like. I don't think I've said that to him, but that's something I said to George a lot. I used to go, you're so cute, you're so cute. And now he still says it, it's so cute, I love it. Back to me getting in bed that night, and there's this cage, and it's close to me, and I wanna bond, and I'm not ready to sleep yet, so I pull him out of the cage, and I sit with him, and I'm thinking he's just gonna sit on the bed. Well, he came in for like a cuddle, and here I am all excited. I put the blanket over him and I start like cuddling him and he's literally like a jersey on me. So rare for an African gray. Now I'm not saying I haven't seen nice cuddly African grays before. Cuddly, we'll use that term loosely, but you know what I mean? The ones that don't mind being pet and cuddled. And there he is falling asleep in my arms. I was just amazed. I couldn't believe it. So that was it. Cody was mine. I was like, this bird is not only my bird, like he's not leaving this house, but he's going to be bonded to me. Right, Cody? Yeah. So from there, I just hung out with Cody more and more and spent more time with him. And being the fifth bird in the house, it's a little bit different than when I had George and George was my one bird alone for a year. The other birds have their schedule. So now we have to take time to fit Cody's schedule in and start blending it. But the other birds, I have to continue to make sure to put their schedules first and then slowly start finding time to hang out with Cody and giving him his alone time with me and socialization with the rest of the family. So Cody is going to develop, I know already, in terms of speaking, a lot slower than let's say George would have. So I know I gotta give him time, but I'm waiting to see what kind of things he will say. Some of the first things that Cody said were, Cody, 
He would be like, Cody. Then he would do the answering machine. Very interesting, because that was the first thing I ever heard George do too. And it's like, who even hears the answering machine anymore? But you know, they hear it through the phone. But what he would do is like, eh. most of all, the most exciting thing I think was just hearing an African gray in the house again. It was like, this is what the house should sound like. For those of you who don't have an African Grey, it's kind of like constant chatter. It's not really like the screams of a cockatoo. He'll talk and sometimes mumble. He also came speaking Hebrew, which is kind of cute and funny. And I know Hebrew, so it was interesting just hearing a bird speak some Hebrew. Really in terms of speaking a lot, he didn't say much. Now ever since having Cody, here are the things that I have heard him say. I've heard him say, of course, I love you, love you, Cody. What else have you said? It's so hard to remember when you're thinking about it. It's so weird. Here's a story of when I first heard Cody say some other things. I went away to Ireland, as you guys know, especially if you follow me on Instagram, you definitely know that and you watch the whole process. Well, who took care of the birds? My sister did. My sister is excellent with the birds. She's here all day long. She's studying to be a vet. She's just amazing with the birds, but we also have two dogs. Two dogs, which are completely my sister's pack. Like this is my flock and the dogs are her pack and they follow her everywhere. So after I went away, I came back and Cody says, when I'm ready to take the dogs outside, he suddenly says, good girl, good girl. And I'm like, whoa, where did you learn that? And I realized he was watching my sister tell the dog, good girl. That's my dog, Sandy. She's a girl. And Cody liked it. So he picked it up. And now every time the dog does something good, Cody says, good girl. And Cody also says, come here and come here, buddy. And good buddy. He said, good bird, which was really, really cute. Cody obviously has something about picking up on things that my sister says when I go away. Because the next time I went away, I don't know where I went. I came back and I'm downstairs and I'm in that process of like, you know, getting them all ready and giving them breakfast. And Cody is there on his stand and the dogs are lurking around. And suddenly Cody says, want to go outside? And I'm like, whoa, that's like the longest sentence I've ever heard you say. Well, maybe not the longest, but kind of like the most complicated, want to go outside. And I realized he knows that it's time to let the dogs outside. Again, he's copying my sister. I'm like, are you practicing things while I'm away? Funny thing, I've never heard him say it since. How come you don't say that, Cody? He's like, that was the only moment that it fit. You're such a genius. So I'm hoping Cody's gonna be a genius. Often, we hear him say something that sounds like my name. But you know how I am, I'm such a perfectionist that if I'm not 100% sure it's my name, I'm like, he hasn't said my name yet. Now here's how Cody is in the household. Cody follows me everywhere. At first, I wasn't sure if Cody could fly. A lot of you were commenting in the videos that he flies down. Well, you know, when birds don't have a lot of confidence flying, the first place they're gonna fly is down. And he really had no history of flying. And keep in mind, when I first met Cody three years ago, this was not a bird that was ever out of the cage. And I know it because I had to go there and show the guy how to take the bird out of the cage. And I can't imagine that in the three years since I saw him, they had taken him out of the cage much at all because When I went to approach the cage, they were like, really, you're gonna take him out? He's gonna bite. And it's kind of amazing that he stepped up in that moment. I still can't believe that the first moment I saw Cody, he just stepped up onto me and let me take him. I think they know, I think birds just know that this is their moment. They just know, I mean, they can behave however they want after that, but They just sense that they're going to a better place. I also think that if you visit a bird before you take them home, they know that too. Sometimes I think that's why they bond with me a lot. So in the household, 
Cody loves me. He's also very possessive over me. When my dad came to visit, I was so excited to introduce him to Cody because you guys know my dad loves birds. Except I didn't really know at this time that Cody was bonding with me in a way that he was very protective over our relationship because he was nice to George and seemingly nice to Jenna. It seemed like he was a well-socialized bird, like he was becoming really easy for other people to hang out with. Well, on this particular day, I wanted to introduce the bird to my dad and Cody was upstairs. The next thing you know, my mom comes down with Cody on her hands, which is just like shocking enough. And I was like, whoa, way to steal the show. All our heads turn. We had family visiting because it was around the Christmas break time. So everyone's there. We're all looking at my mom and we're like, whoa, what are you doing with Cody? She's like, I just asked him to step up and he came. And I'm like, okay, that's exciting. I take Cody before he bites her or anything that I'm not prepared for because I want her experience to be really good because, you know, she's not as forgiving as the rest of us are with the birds but she loves them anyway. I want to introduce him to my dad. It's not going exactly the way I planned and my dad's like, it's okay, let him relax, you know. One day, I'm sitting next to my dad watching a movie that my dad liked and apparently I was too close to my dad because this is the moment when Cody decided to flight train himself. Meaning he's on the stand about 10 feet away he hasn't displayed many acts of flight previously. He's seemingly afraid to fly. He has flown a little bit. He's always flown down. And definitely whenever I said, Cody, come here, he didn't really make any attempts to come fly to me. Well, Cody decided this was going to be his big moment. And little did I know, maybe I was a little too close to my dad for Cody's comfort. I'm always like jumping on my dad and hugging my dad and kissing my dad and all this. Like I'm like, daddy, oh my God, you know, you're so cute. And like just giving him all this attention. Literally like share in Clueless. That's what my mom says it seems like. Anyway, Cody flies over and he lands right here on the couch. And I'm very proud. I'm like, look at you. You've come to me. You're such an amazing bird. He starts doing this weird shuffle. Like he's got his eye on my dad, the way Jersey keeps her eye on Jenna and any guy that looks like they're involved with Jenna. And it's cute, the shuffle. So I'm like, how sweet. And his two little like feet are like this. And he goes like this. And then he stands like an inch closer to my dad. And I'm like, ah, that's so cute. Look at him, dad. He likes you, you know. But the shuffle looks kind of suspicious. And I'm aware of it. And then he goes like this. And then... I get a little too close to my dad and Cody just goes in and bites his lip. And I feel so terrible because I feel like I should have known, but how could I have known? This bird hasn't really bit anyone since. This bird hasn't displayed any enormous bond towards me that he wants to attack everybody else. This is the moment that I'm learning. So he charges at my dad and I'm like, oh my God. Now I don't know if this is like an isolated event or if this is gonna continue to happen. But with birds, you have to treat it like it could always happen again. The next day, there we are, me and my dad again. We're kind of like in a family chat, like each couch has somebody. Cody flies over, again, I'm very proud. He hasn't flown next to my father, so this is okay. And he lands in a spot, kind of like opposite my dad, where he can watch my dad. And then he comes on to me, comes up my shoulder, steps off of me and starts doing that weird shuffle thing close to my dad. And I'm like, dad, just stay away. I don't want him near you. I don't know if the bird's gonna lunch. So I say to dad, do me a favor. 
Take your hat so you're at a distance from the bird and show it to the bird. Well, Cody just lunged at it. And I was like, oh my God, Cody is really, really, you know, he has that side and he is planning on taking it out on my dad. So now I know two things, not to act too cuddly around my dad in front of Cody and also not to bring Cody around my dad. Too close, I mean. Of course, I'm gonna keep him out and on the stands and hanging out, but I don't want any dangerous situations. Also, I gotta keep in mind, who else might he not like? I just gotta be very careful. Remember, he's still new, right, Cody? Did you do these things? I get lost in their eyes, I really do. So that was how he behaved towards my dad. In the meantime, Cody starts to get so attached to me that he flies after me everywhere. He's become very experienced at flight. He loves to fly and he's easily flight trained. He's not afraid to fly to me at all, wherever I am. He's excellent at landing. He's such a smooth flyer that it feels sometimes like Picasso just landed on my shoulder. It doesn't feel like a large awkward bird is landing on me. It literally feels like, like so nice. And I love when he lands on me. And of course it's very flattering. So I'm like, you flew to mommy. This is what Cody does. Once he wakes up in the morning, the moment I go to certain spots in the house, he flies after me. He also flies after me if I pretend to run away. So if he's on the stand and I go, Cody, look, I'm leaving and I run, he flies after me like crazy. He thinks I'm gonna leave him and he has this intense fear. I swear he has this fear that I'm not gonna be around and it scares him. If Cody flies to me, Picasso gets really jealous and flies to me too. So usually I have like two helicopters flying at me. And if they by any chance come across each other right when they're about to land, they'll all do circles in the kitchen. And then I just know what's gonna happen. Cody's gonna land on the couch and Picasso's going to be the one that lands on me because Picasso is extremely skilled at flying. So that's kind of what it's like living with Cody. Cody has recently appeared in my dreams. Every night I dream about Cody, but the dream is not about Cody. The dreams are just regular dreams where I'm getting into a car and Cody's following me. I'm getting into a room and Cody's following me. Really, Cody is just following me everywhere in my dreams because that's pretty much what he does in real life. And the hard thing about it is it's so flattering. I'm just like, yeah, you're following me. But I'm not like, yeah, stand on top of my head. Because how is Cody with my sister? Well, I thought Cody and my sister were pretty good together. They had done some real bonding. They hung out in her room together a lot, as you saw in some of the videos. But the other day, Cody and Jenna and Jersey and I and the dogs were in her bedroom hanging out. And you know how you get on those YouTube modes where you just keep watching video after video? Well, my sister Jenna decides to show me an owl video. I love owls. They're so cute. And one owl video leads to another owl video, leads to another owl video. And this bird is there, but he's not getting 100% attention. My sister and I are laughing. We're on the bed too, so you know, kind of like I'm leaning over and it seems like we're just laughing, hanging out together, kind of like a recreation of me and my dad. Well, Cody starts getting really upset. I can tell, like he starts doing that shuffle. You could tell that he doesn't really want my sister to approach me. Well then, my sister says, let's get an owl. And Cody goes to bite her. He was not excited. Mind you, we're not getting an owl, don't worry about it. I mean, I would love an owl, don't get me wrong, but really, I don't need any more birds and let alone an owl. So, it's just cute, they're just so cute in videos. Like, I want an elf owl, I don't know. Anyway, they're so cute. 
Well, Cody, he knew what we were saying and he does not want to be shoved over while another pet comes in. So he was very upset about that, weren't you, Cody? Were you upset? Were you upset about the owl? Yeah? So he wasn't too happy about the owl, but we soon learned he was even more unhappy about me and my sister laughing and hanging out. He snipped at her. And when he snipped at her, we knew that this might be a dangerous situation because he probably is becoming really protective over me. So we know it's that or the owl. Well, we joke that it's the owl, but really he did not want her next to me. But we still tease him about it. We claim that Cody is jealous of the idea of us getting an owl. Cody. Do you want me to get an owl? <laughs> I said, do you want an owl? <laughs> There's another thing he says, what? I'm telling you, he's not excited about this owl. Don't pull my clip out. Did you hear that? He was like, what? I will not accept no owl in this house. Don't worry, nobody's bringing an owl to the house. How about a toucan? Do you want a toucan? So there's a couple of Cody stories. I feel like I've been leaving Cody out for so long with the Cody stories that I wanted to tell you a few and what it's been like and give you a Cody update. In short, he's having a really good time here. He follows me around everywhere and I just love it. And oh yeah, he's getting bullied by Picasso. Picasso is not having it. Picasso was the baby and Picasso knows that Cody is really loved. So Cody has a hard time in that area because the other birds don't let him on their stand and don't want him in their environment, but he's doing pretty well befriending humans. He'll let guests hold him, but of course not pet him. But you know how African greys are anyway about being pet. They're not gonna let any random person pet them and they're not like cockatoos where they want a lot of like cuddles and love. So he will let guests pick him up and hold him, but you know, I'll make sure I get it back after like five, 10 seconds, just in case. He's really smart. He's learning to speak. Oh, he started to say go potty, except I'm not sure he knows exactly when to say it or what it's for. We're still working on that. The other day he landed on my head and said go potty. Thank God he didn't, right Cody? He's sweet. He lets me pick him up in all different fun ways, which is really cute. And he's just an overall really cute, fun bird. And it's so great to have an African Grey in the house again. And on that note, you guys have got to tune in next Storytime Sunday for the big story. I have been waiting a long time to tell you guys this. Well, that's not true. The truth is, I have been debating for a long time if I should tell you guys this story, but next week is the moment. So come join and hear the magical story of Cody. Bring a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and tune into this one because you are going to be amazed. And non-believers do not show up to this story because it's gonna be pretty amazing or just join in and have fun. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming to Storytime Sunday. Cody and I wanna wish you a brilliant week filled with lots of exciting things. We also would love for you guys to follow us on Instagram, at Marlene McCohen. I use Instagram like Snapchat, so you'll see stories of the birds all day long and my household and the dogs and the birds, especially the birds, because I love filming the birds. So please come visit us on Instagram, but more importantly, join me on Parrot Station. Parrot Station is our Facebook group for people who love birds. Come introduce your bird, say hi, enjoy watching the other birds, and if you need any help or parrot advice, we have so many great people on there. So please come and join Parrot Station. We love to have you. And of course, please subscribe because subscribers are very exciting to us. So exciting that Cody decided to sit on my head for this. 
We love subscribers because it means that that many of you care about your birds and love your birds and want to improve the life of your birdies. So if I could change the life of even just one bird, having better food or more time out, that is what I'm here to do. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We love you. Say bye, Cody. Bye. Say bye, Cody. I'm obsessed. Confusing, huh? Okay. Okay. Bye.